Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be covering the second sister. Now you may remember her from Jedi Fallen Order, and she was a pretty cool character. So let's go into a bit of her life story, at least as much of the information that I could find. The second sister's career as a Jedi hunting inquisitor was far more accomplished than her time in the Jedi Order. Born Trilla Suduri, the female Force user served in the Order at around the same time that Ahsoka Tano apprenticed under Anakin Skywalker. Taken by a Jedi Knight named Sir Junda, Trilla learned the basic tenets of the Jedi Code, and improved upon her basic knowledge of lightsaber combat, which had moved far beyond Form 1. But on the day that Emperor Palpatine executed Order 66, Trilla, just like thousands of Jedi across the galaxy, felt the sudden turn of the clone troopers that served under them. In an instant, Suduri was on the run, and her master, Seer, was there by her side. But when they found a place to hide and keep their accompanying group of younglings safe, Seer Junda decided to be a hero. She ran off and tried to lure the Imperial forces away. If she were quick enough, the plan would have succeeded. But the Imperials were quicker. Seer was captured and after horrible torture, gave up the exact location of Suduri and the younglings. When the Imperials returned to retrieve Trilla, they took her back to their torture facility and used the dark side to turn her into an Inquisitor. From that day forward, she served under Darth Vader and the Grand Inquisitor. In mission after mission, she either directly led hunts against Jedi or aided her fellow Inquisitors in their missions. In the first five years of service to the New Empire, Trilla, who was now known as Second Sister, watched as the hunts for Padawans and Mon Cala and the unknown world that Eeth Koth called home went off without a hitch. Each time the Inquisitors successfully apprehended a Jedi, they came back to their base on Coruscant to celebrate. That is, of course, until their base moved to the moon world of Nur. But all the while, Darth Vader never lost sight of what was most important to him, and that was making sure he was never replaced. This whole order of Inquisitors felt like a terrible trick that the Emperor had played on him. When Anakin was a Jedi Knight and first pledged himself to the Sith, Palpatine made it seem like it would just be him and Anakin facing off against the entire Republic. But now, with 11 other Dark Jedi stationed down the hall, Vader felt like Palpatine wasn't invested in their relationship as Master and Apprentice. And rightfully so. After losing to Obi-Wan Kenobi, he lost most of his abilities. George Lucas has said that Anakin would have been 200% as powerful as the Emperor at his maximum. And now, after his loss to Obi-Wan, he is only 80% of the Emperor's full potential. Now, Vader thought when the opportunity arose that Palpatine would replace him just as quickly as he replaced Maul and Dooku. So in the fifth year of their service, Vader decided to kill two of the Inquisitors. He claimed that they would eventually betray Palpatine, but the Emperor saw through the excuse. Vader simply wanted to reduce his competition. So, Palps ordered the Inquisitors to move to a new base on a distant ocean world called Nur. This would keep them better hidden from the rest of the galaxy and the public eye. Second Sister, as part of the Order, naturally moved along with them. In the years that followed, Jedi sightings became rarer and rarer. But during a mission to the world of Braca, Second Sister found a new one to hunt. Hiding amongst the Scrapper Guild, one of Jaro Tapal's Padawans, a boy named Calcestis. He had managed to avoid the Inquisitors this entire time. But after using the Force to save one of his friends, the locals ratted him out, and Second Sister was here to grab him. After a brief lightsaber duel, Cal managed to get away when Second Sister's former master, Seer, saved him. Her new obsession with Cal was only strengthened by a need for revenge against Seer. After launching an investigation across the galaxy, Second Sister laid a trap for Kestis in a sacred tomb on Zepho. In the short duel that followed, Second Sister managed to use the art of deception to push Cal into playing her game. Allowing him to survive, Second Sister watched as the Jedi Padawan navigated the temple and opened the tomb within. Before their final confrontation, Second Sister found herself answering reports of another Jedi on Ontotho. But just like many times before, she was disappointed. There were no Jedi on this world, just a group of elderly locals who wielded lightsabers and Jedi relics as weapons. When Second Sister had seen enough and disarmed one of the villagers, she learned that there was a sacred temple nearby. Cordova had been there, and it prompted the Inquisitor to chart a course for the Outer Rim to the world of Bogano. This was where Trilla ignited her Crimson Blade against Cal in the hopes of retrieving that holocron that possessed the names of all the Force-sensitive children. Vader desperately wanted this, and to everyone's surprise, in their duel for the third time, 
Kestis's mastery in the Force had nearly recovered to his pre-exile days. He disarmed Second Sister, but not before she managed to grab a hold of the holocron and run away. She took the precious item to Nur, where the Inquisitors have waited for her. But Cal and Second Sister's former master, Seer, were hot on her tail. They fought again, but this time was different. Trilla and her adherence to the dark side were failing. When she was finally confronted by Seer, Second Sister wavered back into the light, and that's when Darth Vader arrived, realizing that Trilla had failed and that she had shown mercy to two Jedi. So Vader promptly killed her before turning to face Cal and Seer. When we look at the life of Second Sister of Trilla and her terrible campaigns against the galaxy, we can find one of the most effective Inquisitors in Palpatine's New Order. And frankly, I wish she were still alive. I wish she were in Kenobi. I thought she was a really great character. Now, we don't know for sure if she's actually dead since everyone can pretty much come back in Star Wars. So if they really want to make her return, they absolutely could. But for now, well, she's gone. Now, just like the Grand Inquisitor above her, Second Sister was a mere Padawan who rose to new heights as a Dark Jedi. And after she delivered the Holocron to Vader and Emperor Palpatine, she would have undoubtedly been rewarded with a higher rank within the Empire, much like what Reva is going for now in the Kenobi show. But unfortunately, her redemption and return to the light side coincided with the sudden arrival of Darth Vader. So her ultimate fate was a swift, clean death. Now, as for the second sister, I think she was insanely powerful. And I think we only got to see a glimpse of that power at her very young age in Jedi Fallen Order. I would love to see her return. I had hoped that they would bring her back in some sort of way. Maybe now that she turned to the light side partially before her death, it means that there could be some hope that she may come back. Not as a force ghost or anything, but actually in the real form. All it takes is for someone to maybe throw her in some Bacta or who knows really. A lot worse things have happened to characters in Star Wars and they're just fine, if anything, they're more powerful than before. That's the one thing with dark side users, I think, that have the advantage over Jedi, is they can stay alive in the corporeal form, in their real form, much easier than Jedi could. For example, Darth Maul got cut in half, but it was his anger and his hatred that fueled his power while he was in that state of dismemberment. Whereas Qui-Gon was stabbed through the gut, which we've seen many times in Star Wars, however he died. I think it was his willingness to let go and to transcend into the Force that allowed him to become a Force ghost, to not fight that will to essentially just keep living. And I think as dark side users, they don't really know that there's another place after death, and especially if you're a dark side user, you can't really go there. So I feel they need to feel the pain that they're feeling in this moment of anguish, physically and emotionally, and really build upon that and harness upon that in order to further their survival. And I think this is something Anakin did when he lost to Obi-Wan. I think this is something Maul did. For example, when Anakin fell to Obi-Wan, his eyes were still blue, and then once he called upon that rage and said, I hate you, his eyes turned to Sith yellow. But the whole fight, they weren't. They were just their normal blue. So I feel even with Anakin's case, if he had really pulled upon the dark side the whole time, man, maybe he would have actually beat Obi-Wan. So in essence, I guess Obi-Wan was holding him back. Maybe his love for Obi-Wan. Who knows? Hope you guys enjoyed this video about the second sister. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think she could be alive? Do you think she could be brought back somehow? Or is she forever gone? I really enjoyed her character, and I hope to maybe see some flashbacks of her or something. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you.